Good morning! As you can see, we're in the Jeep today, but don't get too excited because we're not going to do some cool in the snow off-road recoveries because there's no snow! It was like 70 degrees yesterday. It was so hot, I almost cried. I don't know what is going on, but it just won't snow. So I'm not too happy about that. But we are taking the Jeep because we are doing a repair job, which might sound confusing, but you'll see why in a minute. All right, so you remember that U-Haul with the blown out wheel seal that uh, we left last time so we are waiting on parts. Well, today we're fixing it. If you're wondering why I need the Jeep, it's because this is not a parking lot type of job. I want to take this back to my place and fix it there. Well, I don't have a truck big enough to tow it, but it still runs and it can tow my Jeep. So we have the Jeep hooked to the back of the U-Haul with the tow bar, got the tow lights put on the back, and we're going to take this back to my place and we're going to change that wheel seal. So we are loaded up and headed home. And just to clarify, uh, I did check the fluid in this diff before I drove off with this truck. Um, it still has plenty in it and that would probably be pretty evident by the fact that it's still leaking, but I checked anyway. Uh, it doesn't take much oil to make a very big mess and that diff holds a lot of it. So it's totally fine. The only way that'd be a problem is with the oil all over that brake drum and all that, like going down a super long grade, hard on your brakes and getting that brake drum hot, then you are gonna start smoking that oil and risk of a fire. But since we live in the desert my house is right over there on all flat ground not an issue okay so we made it back here to my shop uh, i got the jeep unhooked off the back and as you can see the truck doesn't fit in the shop so if you're wondering why i went through all the effort of bringing the truck here to still just work on it in the dirt uh, it's because i'm not 100 percent sure what caused the wheel seal to fail uh, this truck only has 62,000 miles on it that should not have failed so is it just a faulty wheel seal that blew out or is it a bearing going out for some reason letting the axle move up and down that wiped it out or is that axle twisted now not totally straight and as it spins also going up and down wiping out the wheel seal so that yard doesn't have a whole lot of room uh, where this truck was at so if i pull this all apart and find out it's more than just the seal i don't want to have this truck pulled apart in pieces in the middle of their cramped yard while they're trying to uh, get customers in and out and all that. And also it doesn't look good to have the trucks pulled totally apart in the middle of the yard in front of customers. So minor stuff that doesn't involve like disassembling major parts on the truck, no big deal, parking lot repairs. Something like this where I'm pulling axles out and all that, I don't really wanna do that in front of customers and have it looking not very professional there. So that's why I brought it here to work on it in the dirt. So this is where it all went wrong. Uh, by this point, I had already tried using my normal electric impact guns with no luck, switched to my one inch drive air impact that I use for all my big semi trucks and hammered on these lugs for so long that I broke my one inch drive impact socket, then switched to my three quarter drive set and a big six foot cheater pipe on a breaker bar and snapped my three quarter drive impact extension so I had to resort to heating them up glowing red with the torch and then prying them off with a, uh, a big breaker bar as you can see. Uh, some sort of substance is on these threads. I don't know if it's Loctite or what that seized the lugs to the stud. And you can see as I break them free, whatever that substance is flaring up because it's hotter than its flash point and then reacting with the oxygen. So I don't know what was on these things, but it seized every single lug to the stud and this was the only way of getting them off of there. It got the job done, but you're about to see what the consequences of that was. See, I'm now at the hospital. Uh, luckily, I'm sitting in the chair, not 
laying on the bed over there. Uh, I overstrained myself just a little bit uh, doing all that and uh, blew out a hernia. So I'm going to deal with this whole thing and then uh, I will update you guys once I'm done with this and know a little bit more about what exactly we're doing here. So we're all done at the hospital and I'm not super thrilled about the news I got. I was hoping for, you're fine, quit being a baby, go back to work. What I got was, you really messed up, uh, you see the surgeon on Tuesday. So today's Saturday afternoon and Tuesday I gotta meet with the surgeon to see what the game plan is to fix this, because long story short, I got a hernia. Uh, a peristomal ileostomy hernia to be more specific, but um, I know I'm super susceptible to hernias. That's something that's drilled into you when you get something like an ileostomy because a, uh, a hernia is when an intestine blows a hole in your abdominal wall and goes through it. And uh, when you have an ostomy, you have a hole in your abdominal wall with an intestine going through it. It's like a built-in hernia just ready to go. So you're really susceptible to it. You're supposed to be very careful when doing any sort of strenuous activity. You're supposed to wear the hernia belt special made for ostomies with the hole in it and all that stuff anytime you do that. Um, careful when lifting things and all that and I'm, I'm none of those things. I'm very far from careful. But when you go so many years never having a problem with something, you become less and less careful and worried about it until it finally bites you in the ass, which is what happened to me. So I meet with the surgeon on Tuesday to see how we're going to fix this and what the game plan is. I don't know the exact process. I know it's much more involved than the average person and recovery time is much longer because you can't just push it all back in and uh, seal up the hole and call it good because there still has to be a hole with an intestine going through it, which is kind of a hernia. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I guess find out Tuesday. Um, the real bad thing about this is I know it's a long recovery time and this next week or so uh, is winter when winter is finally supposed to hit us um, it's really late this year but it is coming now and uh, snow season is when I make most of my money so super not ideal timing and uh, I'm gonna see if it's possible with the surgeon when I meet with them to push this surgery back until like May or something like that so that I can work through my whole busy season but like I said find that out on Tuesday so um, guess I should start being a little more careful with that type of stuff and uh, listen to these things that doctors say I guess would be a good idea uh, but until Tuesday your guess is as good as mine as far as what exactly is going to happen so for now uh, we got a tow to do out in Prineville I guess it's a 2020 Chevy Colorado that uh, blew a transmission it sounds like so uh, we got an hour drive about to get to where they're at so we're going to head out there get them loaded up and towed to the shop so let's get heading that way and I'll see you there all right, and an hour later, we are here, and there's a Chevy Colorado. So uh, there's a big community out here, out this uh, road here. This is where all the mailboxes are, and I pick up an abnormally large number of vehicles at this intersection here where all the mailboxes are. So let's go check this one out and see what we got. All right, we are here at the customer's house. He's an older gentleman, a Marine Corps vet, and uh, he had all his groceries and stuff in the truck, so I ran it a couple miles up the road. It's the opposite way where we need to go, but that's just fine. Uh, and helped him get all his groceries unloaded in the house. Uh, and now he's unloading the, or opening the gate for us, and we can head out of here and go get this thing back to the shop for him. So, not clip the dollies on the gate there. Good to go. All right, we made it out the gate, and uh, now we can head to the shop. Uh, that guy, really cool old guy, said Marine Corps vet, uh, career Marine Corps vet. That's what he did his whole career there. So 
uh, awesome to be able to help him out. Got his groceries in, now we'll get his truck to the shop, and then I think we will head home from there. All right, we are here at the repair shop. It's like 25 minute drive to get here. And uh, we got a spot right over there, she said, we can put it. So we're gonna have to pull up there and then like horseshoe back all the way around and back into there. So uh, maybe I could put you guys there and you can watch me take 5 million tries to back into there. That'd be fun. See, I didn't screw up that bad. Okay, I know you guys can't see too awfully great, but it kind of is what it is. Um, Get this mm -hmm. off of here. I adjusted this door stop so I can swing it open farther and I can actually get the dollies in and out while the vehicle's still hooked up. So that's a big help. And uh, safety chains are off already before we pulled around back here. I took them off when I stopped up front and checked in with these people. Uh, apparently this truck had an appointment for Monday anyway because it's getting valves or valves or something like that went wrong with it. So. Good thing is he already had an appointment and doesn't have to wait for one. Bad thing is transmission's blown out on his 50,000 mile truck. I don't like feel that bad until I stretch or move the wrong way. And then you can really feel that hernia thing. So that's not ideal. All right, I skipped the whole uh, taking the straps off the other side thing because it'd just be you staring at a truck in the dark, which doesn't make sense. So unlock the dollies, drop that side down, unlock this side, drop that side down. And now we can pop the rails free. And I know I'm gonna get some crap for just having a hernia and then coming right out here and towing. But luckily I use the call installies, which are the lightest in the industry. So I can still carry them with one hand, even with a hernia. And their cross rails are also the lightest in the industry. Fun fact. Okay, you grab the ones from this side, even though you can't see me, but yeah. I mean, I'm probably not supposed to be carrying these right now, but I can. Might get in trouble when my wife sees this, but oh well. Wouldn't be the first time. So this is way nicer being able to load the dollies on the truck while it's still hooked to the vehicle and not have to do an extra step of pulling forward first. The only negative over my other truck is, since the bed's shorter, I gotta collapse the bars a little bit to, to fit the rails inside, but not a huge deal. Okay, that is Everything's off the truck, so we can close up the back end here. And then, uh, I guess I take pictures now. All right, we got all our pictures taken, so I can set it down and get out of here. And this is where the auto loader comes in super handy. Set it on the ground. Now I can open my arms up. And head out of here. Other than the part where I had to get out and uh, come get you guys. Make sure we get our light. And look, now you can see me, because I have a light. So we're just gonna drop the key off up front here and then we can head home. All right, we just got the key dropped off up front there. You can't see up front because these stupid windows are tinted so dark. But now we are going to hit the road. All right, we are off and headed home. Not like the happiest-go-luckiest video ever because this week did not end exactly as I wanted it to. 
But uh, like I said, I guess we'll find out on uh, Tuesday what the future holds. Hopefully not surgery for a while. So uh, until then, actually not until then, uh, I think in between now and then, we're gonna go do that uh, off-road recovery of that military log skitter truck thing. So I don't know. I don't know what you're gonna see next. It might be me going into surgery. It might be a super cool off-road recovery. It might be another tow. Either way, I don't know. Uh, but whatever it ends up being, we will see you then because that is the end of this video. So thanks for watching. Good night.